CataractCoach.com. Resident attempts a white cataract. This is case number 50 for this young doctor, and he does a good job. Now, the case is supervised by his attending professor. I didn't supervise the case. The video was sent in afterwards, so I like those kind of cases. You can see how other people teach. So you can see that cannula to the top left of your screen. That's, I'm sure, his attending. So nice looking caps rex is a little on the small side for my flavor, but we can see that's a pretty good looking cataract, nice and opaque. Gentle hydrodissection, be very gentle on this because it's a little bit of a small rexus and you can't see the fluid wave that goes behind because the lens is so opaque. It definitely spins. Remember these white cataracts, it's often a white cataract due to opacification or liquefaction even of the cortex. So these spin very easily, often without hydrodissection. So phaco probe going inside the eye here. You obviously can tell we sped up the video to three times normal speed just so we can watch the entirety of it. So here comes the groove, and that looks like a very nice groove. Looks like a maybe a divide and conquer or stop and chop technique. I like the grooves, nice deeper in the center, a little bit shallow in the periphery, which is of course ideal. Remember the cataract is shaped like that M&M, &M, so it's very thick in the center and thinner out in the periphery. So you really have to have that bottom of that groove have the same curvature as the posterior aspect of the lens. So look at that groove, very nice, not even that deep, but the lens has good density, so a nice chop or a nice crack or separation. So rotate that around and really get it separated. I like the extra effort here to really get it rotated and really get it separated because these can be fibrous like you're seeing here. Now the pupil came down because he inadvertently came off the foot panel for just a moment, but really spend your time, make sure they're fully separated. That looks a lot better. When they're fully separated, it's gonna be a lot easier. So that's fully separate, I think. Now going to some chop mode. Looks like a stop and chop technique, bringing that nucleus up, beautiful technique. I like how the right hand with the faker probe retracted and pulled the nucleus up out of the capsule bag, makes it a lot easier. Now be careful here about riding the corneal endothelium. You don't wanna to be too close to the endothelium, but that's a really nice looking technique here. So remainder of that first hemi-nucleus again, another chop, really quite good, very impressed. And here we go, taking down this last little bit. You can see there's one hemi-nucleus left in the capture bag. Eye staying in primary, this is a really nice job. Eye staying in primary the whole time. So going to the side of the nucleus, bringing it up and chopping a corner off. Remember, it's easier to chop off a small corner than it is to go in the middle and try to split it in half, especially when you have a nucleus like this with more density. So it's uh, coming out quite nicely. Now this is an odd chopper, not my favorite chopper. That ball tip on the chopper, I think gives you a false sense of security and makes your chopping less efficient. You don't wanna have a ball tip chopper, at least not in my, my view. So this, this young doctor is doing a great job and still using that chopper and getting these pieces out. Beautiful, beautiful job here. Now, there's not much of a red reflex, and that's probably because of the microscope light settings. Look at the cornea. There's one light reflex, right? That's the paraxial light, the one that's off by a few degrees to give overall lighting. You need to adjust the lighting so you also have the coax illumination. You want to have, with this microscope, but I can tell you it's a Zeiss microscope because I, I know the facility, this should have three lights, two coaxial and then this one paraxial. But the reason why the red reflex is so poor is because of that. Now, there could also be other reasons. If you had bad zonular support, you could have had tripan blue dye go back into that vitreous cavity, and that can also cause a diminished red reflex. But I think part of it really is due to the lighting because you can see the only one light reflex on that first Purkinje image. So cortex coming out pretty nicely. That looks great. And cleaning up. Now here's where you may have a little bit better luck if you use your left hand with the chopper to help lift the iris because the pupil's coming down now. So cleaning up here a little bit more subincisional space. Notice how when the probe goes in the eye, that infusion pressure helps open up that pupil. Here comes our viscoelastic fill in the bag. Good job there. And then I'm gonna load up the lens a bit at this point. So I tell you, for case number 50, this looks great. I like the incisions even. We didn't see the incisions in the video, but you can see that main phaco incision looks like a good tunnel length. I like its positioning, hitting the limbal vessels. You can see the paracentesis, which is highlighted with the tripen blue dye and the corneal stromal tunnel. That looks like it's great too. Here comes the lens, very efficient job of loading the lens. My residents here will certainly load up their own lenses. 
And this was, case was done by one of our residents at our sister hospital. So not the hospital where I teach the residents, but at another Los Angeles County Hospital. Lens goes there in the bag. Now here's where you really want to use that chopper. Use the chopper, lift up the iris to ensure the lens is in the capsule bag. Now I'm pretty sure it is. Here with the infusion pressure, yeah, you can see it looks like it's pretty much in the bag. Uh, now we can tell for sure when you get some of those reflections of light. So again, you can see the prokinium is the first and second prokinium is those two little dots on the center there. And that's a really nice job. I like the ceiling of the incision. Wow, this patient's going to be so happy. If this resident's doing this well, case number 50, I'm blown away happy. I think you're going to do great. I think case 50 is like this. Case 500 will be even better. I can't wait to see you operate on case number 1000. Great work. Congratulations. Keep up the hard work. And remember, be your own toughest critic. Thanks for watching. Check out cataractcoach.com. I know you love the YouTube videos, but check out the website, cataractcoach.com. A lot easier to navigate. We have a complete list of articles and videos. You can go and check on any of these categories and explore more. You can also search. There's a search engine that's really effective. You can see Gore-Tex lenses like this. And finally, you can look up about me. There's a link that has my surgical instruments. Now you don't even have to ask me. You can just find out for yourself. What's the name of those forceps?